Continuous distillation requires a constant flow system to deliver wash at a steady rate into the column. And my system requires a second one to deliver water to the steam generator. Getting a pumping system with stable enough flow over several days and with precise enough controllability is one of the major problems. I have a workable solution but it's not perfect and it's quite complex. I use peristaltic roller pumps. I started with this system because these pumps have the right range of flow rates, are reasonably stable and widely and cheaply available. Also, other home continuous distillers seem to favour them. In this video I share what I have found about roller pump systems, but I'm not necessarily recommending them. Roller pumps use a length of rubber tubing in a semicircular housing that is squashed flat by rollers that rotate around the housing, such that liquid is trapped between two points of contact. This trapped liquid is moved around the housing at a known rate as the roller carrier rotates. These pumps have the advantage that the liquid being pumped doesn't come into contact with anything except the inside of the tubing, which is particularly good for corrosive or hazardous liquids. That's not such an issue with our application though. A disadvantage is that the flow rate is not constant, but varies as each aliquot of liquid is released when the roller moves away from the housing. But this variation is fast enough and small enough not to be an issue for us. The cheapest roller pumps available are these DC pumps that usually come with silicon rubber tubing. They're not suitable. They cannot be controlled with sufficient precision. Even with precise control of the supply voltage, the speed of the pump varies, slowing as the rubber becomes stiffer, which it does as it gets colder. Therefore the flow rate tends to drift. Also, silicon rubber is not suitable because it's not sufficiently durable. I found that silicon rubber fails by splitting along the folds after 48 to 72 hours of continuous operation. Instead, you need to use pumps like this. These are better quality roller pumps driven by stepper motors. They cost around $20 for the pump head and $10 for the stepper motor which is a mass produced model widely used in printers and CNC machinery. Instead of silicon rubber, BPT rubber is required. You'll also see latex tubing recommended. Latex does not fatigue and split like silicon, but I found it susceptible to abrasion by the rollers. It failed from wearing through as fast as silicon failed from splitting. BPT rubber hose costs about $10 for a metre and lasts several months in this application. The piece that needs replacing is only about 10 centimetres long, so it's not that expensive. I use 3 by 5 millimetre tubing. In general, you want to use the widest tube that the pump will accommodate, as it allows for a lower motor speed and a longer tube life. To get this system working, you need to understand how stepper motors work, and there are many good videos explaining that on YouTube, so I won't go into it. I use an A4988 driver like this. It has four output pins to drive the two coils of the stepper motor and other pins for the motor power supply, a lower voltage supply to power the electronics, that's VDD. There's an input pin that you feed a square wave to where every cycle of the square wave moves the motor one step. There's a sleep pin, a direction pin and three micro step or MS pins that determine how many steps there are per revolution. The maximum number of steps is 3200 and this is determined by all the MS pins being high, which is what I use. We don't need to change direction, so I suggest also putting the direction pin high and the sleep pin low. Do not leave unused pins disconnected, as they will drift in voltage causing erratic behaviour. You also need another chip, which is a signal generator to provide the correct frequency. For this I use an A9833 breakout board, which is an A9833 chip and 25MHz quartz crystal that gives a precise output frequency that's controlled by an SPI bus. This can be controlled by an Arduino, Raspberry Pi or similar. I use a Raspberry Pi. All these are inexpensive components. For my column requiring two roller pumps, one for wash feed and one for water to the steam generator, the total cost for all electronic components required, including the pumps, chips, circuit boards, additional components, Raspberry Pi, a keyboard and mouse and screen, is about $200. If you're going to make one, you will need to know something about electronics and will also require some electronic test equipment, including an oscilloscope, a digital multimeter, logic analyzer and probes and soldering equipment. 
If you're anything like me, you'll also need loops. That lot will come to a further two to three hundred dollars. In the case of the Logic Analyzer, this is a cheap thing costing a few dollars, but it is a USB PC accessory, and so it requires a PC, which I haven't included in the extra price of two to three hundred dollars. If you're not familiar with electronic small board computers like the Raspberry Pi or Arduino and what an SPI bus is and how to use it but would like to build one, then let me know and I'll make some more detailed videos on the electronic technicalities. Better yet, there are plenty of electronics enthusiasts around who are short of interesting projects and will be pleased to collaborate for a share of the benefits. A final, perhaps cryptic, comment is that the A9833 uses the relatively uncommon SPI mode too. Overlooking that cost me quite a bit of head-scratching. Anyway, that's how it's set up. The signal generators and stepper motors are highly precise. The performance of the roller pump itself is OK, but far from perfect. It is the kind of pump I have the most experience with at the moment, which is why I'm concentrating on it in this video. But because of its inadequacies, I'm looking at trying other systems, specifically gravity feed and gear pumps. The problem with roller pumps is that the rate at which they pump is dependent on the elastic properties of the rubber tube, and these are not constant. They vary as the tube fatigues, with temperature, and with the pressure on the inlet side of the pump. This graph shows the measurements I have made of the relationship between the flow rate and inlet pressure for a constant motor speed for two different materials, BPT rubber in blue and latex in red. You can see that the flow rate varies by around 10% per metre of water pressure change for BPT. Latex is better, but does not last long enough for this application. If you're drawing wash out of a barrel, it's probably at least 50 centimetres deep, so you can expect a 5% flow rate change from full to empty from pressure alone, which is too much. And that's why I use these float valve chambers to keep the pressure on the inlet side of the pump constant, irrespective of the height of wash in the barrel. But if you do that, you're already three quarters of the way to making a gravity feed system, so why not use that instead? Why not indeed? Another problem is fatigue. I've only done this with BPT tubing because both silicon and latex don't last long enough. The still is designed to operate continuously for several weeks. This graph shows pump flow rates at a fixed motor speed over three weeks. You can see that rubber fatigue from new reduces the flow rate by about 20% in the first day. Then it falls by another 10% over the next 7 days. It then reaches a stable plateau. In this case, on day 15, I got bored with the test and increased the motor speed fivefold to see if the fatigue rate increased. It did, but then on returning to the original speed, flow returned to the stable level but took 2 days to do so. And rescaling the X axis shows something else. Speeding the motor fivefold only increased the flow rate twofold showing a significant non-linearity due to slow relaxation and filling of the tube. These factors combine to make it difficult to get the pump to stay within about 1% of its determined flow rate for a long period of time. It's just about manageable if you use a float valve header tank to keep the pressure constant. If you have to change the tubing, you will need to run it in for a week until the fatigue rate stabilises and then recalibrate the pump. So for true continuous operation, you really need at least three pumps, one already run in and calibrated, ready to swap in when a tube fails. It is a workable and relatively inexpensive solution. It's just rather a pain, particularly when you consider all the complicated electronics necessary. However, this is a demanding application, and having a computerized system has the advantage of being easily adaptable to closed loop feedback control. This is something I'm working on, I've yet to develop a satisfactory electronic parrot which would be the ideal feedback sensor, but temperatures may serve as surrogates. I will turn to this and other feed systems in future videos.